Just here at 9.05, we have the newest Secretary of Education for the United States, Dr. Miguel Cardona, joining us live. And he is speaking with Jen Bernstein right now. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Tim and Erica, nice to be with you all bright and early. What a whirlwind it's been for Dr. Cardona, especially the last few days. And we are very grateful that he's taking time out of his busy schedule to talk with us this morning. Meriden's own Dr. Miguel Cardona, the new U.S. Education Secretary, joins us this morning. Good morning. What's it like hearing that title? Uh, it's, uh, I, I hope it never gets old. Uh, nice to be with you, Jen. Thank you for, for having me. Of course. All right, so what's it been like for the last few days? I mean, you went home to where it all started with the First Lady of the United States. You know, what were you thinking when, when you were there yesterday? It was such a proud moment for, for our city, for our school system, uh, because, you know, there are so many hardworking people in, in, in Meriden, and I was just, I'm proud to be, to be a part of that community and proud to have the First Lady visit. It was, it was very special, and obviously, you know, having my parents there and family there and just to see all my colleagues and friends uh, celebrating in the moment, it was special. Dr. Cardona, I mean, your work ethic speaks for itself, right? I mean, you, you were a fourth grade teacher. You became a principal. You became an assistant superintendent. You became the commissioner of the Department of Education, and now you're the nation's top educator. What does it mean to you when you hear that you're inspiring kids across the United States and especially in your home city of Meriden, where you were a student? You know, I'm going to flip it and say they inspire me. At the end of the day, as Secretary of Education, whether whether I'm Secretary of Education or I remember being a fourth grade teacher, it's about students. It's about ensuring that we do everything in our power. Every, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a position where I can serve students uh, across the country now. But that same passion, the same values that drove me as a fourth grade teacher, as a principal, assistant superintendent, college instructor, in Commissioner of Education, uh, that has not changed. And and really, it's not just about my passion. It's about building a team of people that really understand that we're privileged to serve the students of our country. And, and it's what, what a calling. Any educator will tell you it's a calling. It's not a job. And I'm fortunate to be in this role. What was it like to get that call from uh, President Biden? It was special. Uh, I, I interviewed with President Biden. It was a Sunday evening. And, uh, and Vice President Harris on a separate call. And uh, the president said, I'll call you tomorrow. Um, so of course, I didn't sleep much that night. I, I was told I was gonna get a call at a specific time. When I got that call, I had uh, my wife and my children with me. And when the president offered the position to me, it was something I'll never forget. Uh, I had my, my family, we were, we were locked uh, in a hug and we had a, a very good conversation, the president, uh, shared what his plans are and why he felt that I could be the, I should be the Secretary of Education and asked me if I can join the team. And one of the greatest honors of my life, and I, I, I look forward to serving in this capacity. You went through one of the most rigorous processes a person can go through. You were vetted by federal lawmakers on a national stage in a highly politicized climate, and you still came out with bipartisan support. Some uh, 14 Republicans in the Senate joined in confirming you. Uh, you know, and that's something that your predecessor did not have. How did you navigate that? Because that's got to have been a lot of pressure. You know. We are in an unprecedented time. I don't have to tell you that. What we've experienced together in Connecticut, uh, this country is in the middle of a pandemic. And throughout the process, one of the things that I hold true to is that we need to listen to different perspectives, respect one another, and even disagree respectfully. Uh, you know, the, the bipartisan support was is was important because we're all in this together, you know, they're all of our students and we're going to work together to do that. And, you know, part of that is really ensuring that the uh, American Rescue Plan get, goes forward in a way to support all students, regardless of state, regardless of you know, red or blue. Listen, they're students and we're going to keep them at the center. And that's always been how I operate, keeping the students at the center of the conversation. You have said that priority number one is reopening schools uh, and doing it Safely. I mean, this is no easy task, of course. I know that you um, you did an op-ed piece, an opinion piece in USA Today, where you laid out a five-point plan. So, where do you start with us? Right. You know, and a lot of a lot of what I'm proposing is based off my experiences in Connecticut. 
there, there's no playbook. There's no playbook, whether a commissioner or secretary of education on how to reopen from a pandemic. What we do know is that when we come together and we listen to the best ideas and what people learn by making mistakes, we're going to get the best strategies and we're going to communicate those strategies. And so it's really about engage, engaging folks early, parents, students, educators, uh, leaders, and saying, let's solve this together and building a culture of trust and respect and then the technical stuff will come, but keeping keeping that that positive communication and the problem solving mentality, the the shared problem solving mentality, is how we're going to get through these problems. And you know that's the American way, and we're going to do it in education, and we're going to thrive, and our our school system across the country is going to is going to be better because of it. Yeah, I'm looking right here. I mean, you say a lot. This is what we did in Connecticut. This is how we tested it out here in Connecticut. How is that experience going to help this? move forward? And were the things in Connecticut that you felt like didn't necessarily work that you want to change on the national platform? Right. At the, at the national level, you know, providing a, a COVID-19 handbook, which was already done even before I became secretary, weeks before. But we're, we're really looking at a second version that has more robust information um, with uh, tips and, and strategies that we learn from stakeholders that we're convening. We're also going to do a summit where we're going to bring people together, including the health experts, which is very similar to what we did in Connecticut. We've been doing that weekly since March, um, bringing educational stakeholders, sometimes two, three times a week, coming together to hear what's working, what's not working. Um, so those are some of the things that we're going to be doing, uh, clearly collecting data on school reopening. As you know, we had data on schools reopening in November. Uh, so having those data allows us to really focus our energy in those areas that need it the most. And, you know, in terms of continuing to learn, that's an ongoing process. So we're, we are going to learn what works best, and we're going to try to replicate those practices. What are we thinking for the fall? I mean, are we expecting students to be back fully in person by then? Are you hoping maybe later this spring? Give me a timeline when, when you're looking. You're now in this position. You've looked under the hood. You know what you're dealing with. What do you think? So, you know, I, I know in Connecticut with over 90% of the students having in-person options uh, and we were able to do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that before the fall, we have uh, the majority of schools across our country uh, open and staying open and opening safely. I, I want to make sure that I make that crystal clear. It's about safe reopening of schools so that they can continue to stay open. So the goal is really to really problem solve where the issues are, provide te technical support, whether that's sharing best practices or ensuring that our handbook uh, provides really good strategies that others have used to be successful. It's really about providing that technical assistance, rolling up our sleeves, working with folks to problem solve together like we did in Connecticut. I know we can do that across the country. All right, Dr. Cardona, are you in Washington? Are you are you home in Connecticut? Well, where are you right now? I am in Washington. I'm actually sitting at my desk this morning. Okay. Well, uh, you know what? Actually, I want to I want to leave with one more note. What's your message for kids? I, they have not had an easy year. We know it's taken a toll. Uh, people are behind on learning. Uh, we know their emotional health of children, you know, is at stake here, and it has not been easy. So, what's your message for America's kids? Thank you, Jennifer, for closing with that. That's critically important. Uh, the message to students is uh, we see you, we hear you, and you're the reason why we want to safely reopen our schools. Um, and also, while there's a lot of uh, conversation about what was lost, one thing that I, I noticed and really came to life yesterday when we visited Pennsylvania and Meriden with the First Lady is the level of resilience that our students have. They're stronger, and they're going to get through this, and they're going to be stronger after this. And you know, for the students who are watching, um, we're going to work hard for you, and we're always going to keep you at the center of the conversation because you matter most. All right. Dr. Miguel Cardona, thank you so much for coming on this morning. We know you are so busy. You're always welcome back, of course, in your home state here on this news program. So please thank keep you. in touch. It's my pleasure, Jennifer. Thank you.